Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health. This week, we are welcoming Justin Baker to talk to us about human growth hormones. Justin is the founding president of biotech protein technology. His company was the first to develop a non-synthetic, non-invasive alternative to human growth hormones. He has worked with many people, including doctors, athletes, and even military personnel over his career. In this episode, Dustin's going to discuss human growth hormone, how he got started in it, why he got started in it, and where the benefits may lie and who it could benefit. So many of you have heard me speak about human growth hormone before for optimizing healing, regeneration, fat burning, cognitive performance, and everything. But by no means am I the expert. That's where Dustin comes in. So hopefully he can enlighten us a little bit more. And before we go on, I must remind you that the information in these episodes is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Please consult your health practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. We always have to get that in, don't we, Dustin? Just (laughs) the legalities. 100%. Yep. I all the time. Yes, ma'am. So how are you today? I'm phenomenal. I am really, really great. Thank you for asking. How's uh, the weather up there in Canada? Well, you know what? We normally vacation in Florida a lot, and I love the temperature in Florida, but we've been having a heat wave in Alberta for about a month now, and I'm just not dealing with it very well. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I think to climatize better in Florida than in Alberta. When Where do you typically go when you're in Florida? Normally Orlando, and I okay. think as well though I vacation, so there's normally more carbs, and I think maybe the carbs help me retain more fluid as well. So I I don't know. I'm trying to consider everything, but again, I'm Irish, and we never get above like 25 degrees in Ireland. Mm, good to know. <laughs> so human growth hormone. I'm actually, believe it or not, quite passionate about human growth hormone, but no. By no means am I the expert. This is where you come in. So tell us, what got you started in this area and how did it evolve to be where it is for you now? Sure. So um, I'm not a physician. I am not a doctor. I, um, I'm just a normal guy like everybody else who got their hands on a really cool product that, um, you know, that from a company that specializes in these alternatives to human growth hormone. And I was just a user. So, you know, they were using these products. They're, they're incredible. I was really lucky to even have access to them. And as a, you know, an entrepreneur or business person at heart, um, it was kind of a no brainer. It's like, okay, cool. How do we get something that is so incredible and works so well that nobody seems to know about, at least on a you know, a massive global scale. How do we get our hands on this and, and be the individuals to take it um, across the country and frankly, now internationally? That's literally where I come in. So just a normal guy, used it, um, got a great business partner. We figured out how to get our hands on this company and acquire it. And now I'm talking to you and trying to tell everybody about how great it is and um, from personal experience and, and, you know, anecdotal experience from physicians and athletes for over 10 years. See, I told you, Mike, <laughs> we're pretty casual. So you mentioned that human growth hormone is quite incredible. Why? Why is it incredible in your opinion? And and what is it for people who don't know? Yeah. I mean, that's a great, that's a really great question. And the reason why that's a great question, I think is because, and this is of course my opinion, but I believe it's, it's in today's society, day and age, and even medical community, it's highly, highly overlooked. So my job literally is to educate physicians on applications of this drug, on what we provide, et cetera, at all different types all over the all over the country. And what I see routinely is that the education on growth hormone is a fraction of a percentage of what you get when compared to, let's say, testosterone or estrogen, which are sex dominant hormones. So estrogen and testosterone, I'm sure your viewers are probably aware. And if you're not, they're sex dominant hormones. Men are predominantly um, have testosterone and women predominantly have estrogen, right? 
um, human growth hormone is what is considered a master hormone. And it is not sex dominant. It is absolutely equal in both men and women. However, people hear the term like growth hormone and they immediately think like steroids or like this crazy stuff and bodybuilders and everything, which it it absolutely has the ability to help in those scenarios, but that's not what it is. Human growth hormone or growth hormone is literally the hormone responsible for things like metabolic function, immune function, inflammation response, healing, wound healing, injury healing, muscle tissue, the collagen in your face. I mean, human growth hormone is the chemical catalyst for all of these different processes. It just somehow it magically gets overlooked in today's um, society and people don't even test for it that much anymore, even though I mean, it decreases at a massive, massive rate, sometimes by 50% by 35. So it's really a big deal. People wake up, they feel like crap in their forties. They don't realize why they, you know, they can jump on other synthetic hormone therapies and they completely are, you know, their growth hormones completely overlooked by either their practitioner or their medical professional or wherever they're getting their other synthetic therapies. And it's, they're only really getting half of the puzzle. So that's, that's kind of almost why you can tell I get off on this rant because I'm so I'm passionate about it. And I think individuals are missing out on a huge part of feeling better in their life. Yeah, I get it. And it's, it's my experience that a lot of practitioners, doctors, family physicians, Honestly, a lot of practitioners I come across, even health coaches, they never speak about human growth hormone. It's never a topic of conversation. And like you mentioned, the, people are missing out on the, this knowledge when they wake up and their hair is falling out or they've got wrinkles, which let, that's kind of superficial, but that's where we are in society. Is all of, it's all about how I look nowadays. But when it's something as simple as, oh, I, I'm not healing wounds properly, or I have aches and pains, or I look older than I actually am, uh, people don't understand, well, this human growth hormone is a big part of this. So when you decided to get human growth hormone kind of on your, um, we call it a CV in Ireland, but onto your resume, you clearly were very passionate about what it could do for people and the benefits that people potentially would see. So what, what has your research shown you? What, what has your experience even shown you? Where are we seeing the benefits with optimizing human growth hormone? So I would like to, if you don't mind, clarify a few different things. Um, number one is I'm passionate about human beings feeling the best way they possibly can and not feeling like crap. So, I mean, we're here in the States. It's, it's really crazy that in today's day and age, it's like almost expected that if you're 45 years old or you're 40 years old, or even in your late thirties or in your fifties, like it's okay to feel like crap. That's just life. It's okay to be overweight. It's okay to get poor sleep. It's okay to be stressed. It's because that's just the way life is. That is crap to be straight up and down. Like that is not the way life is supposed to be. In fact, if you were to go a century back and let's say 1940, like in the 1940s, cause I can actually talk about specific studies or specific numbers, but let's say you were to go in the 1940s, which is not a full century, but very close to it all the way back. Let's use a man specifically, a men's hormone level at in his twenties is absolutely very different than a men's hormone level today in the early part of the 21st century. I mean, massively different to the sense of we'll use this for, to actually quantify it, a men's testosterone level. We'll talk about testosterone just as a hormone, but testosterone level in 2020 is the equi at 20 years old is the equivalent of a 67 year old man's in the year 2000, a 20 year old. Okay. That means they're aging at a 47 year plus difference of how these hormones are depleting. Human growth hormone is no different. That has to do with lifestyle choices. That has to do with things that are put in your foods these days, how you're consuming your food, where you're getting your food from, lack of exercise. I mean, our obesity rate is directly related to those types of things. The point being to take a step back is I'm passionate about helping people feel better, live better. Like you don't have to feel terrible. You don't. And there's ways to do it and feel better that are safe, that are non-invasive. You don't have to take all kinds of drugs. That's my passion. That's what I do for a living. And that's really how I got into this business, even to begin with at all. I felt the difference and I felt the effects and I loved it. 
why wouldn't I want to share that with everybody? Yeah, that's true. Would you agree that human growth hormone is the basis of almost life and all other hormones? I mean, it is what it says on the tin, human growth hormone. It helps us grow and heal and regenerate and whatever other words you want to throw at it. But as soon as we're born, if you didn't have, if you had a deficiency of human growth hormone, you would not grow at the same pace as the baby next to you and so on and so on. Like, in my opinion, this is the basis. So that's a huge statement, but I don't necessarily completely disagree. And I will further your statement to other hormones, which are popular. I always talk about testosterone and estrogen because people are familiar with them. However, what a lot of people don't know is that if you don't have adequate human or growth hormone and its end result growth factors, which we can talk about because that is really what our business does. Um, you can't actually optimally use estrogen or testosterone, whether it's synthetic or natural. So if you're, if you're going to your doctor and you're getting blood work and blood panels done, and you're not asking for a test to actually test human growth hormone, which you would test for insulin, like growth factor one, we can get into that if you have any questions, but if you're not seeing that on your blood panel, you are literally missing half of the entire puzzle of all of the information that you just required, you just requested, because if you're getting a testosterone blood work or blood panel done, and you're looking at those numbers, you can't actually even exert all of the full benefits. Like I just said, from a natural or synthetic, if your growth factor level or growth hormone level isn't adequate to offset that it's literally the entire half of the puzzle. So I would agree with you that it is a massive, major, major deal. Um, yeah, that's, that's literally how the synthetic drug was created is if you were a kid and you had what you just mentioned, which is growth hormone deficiency syndrome, um, in the sixties and prior, they literally extracted this from human cadavers to give to children because if you couldn't grow, I mean, your life was going to be terrible. Your life, or I wouldn't say terrible, excuse me. Your life was going to be harder than if you had the appropriate um, growth hormone levels. So that's literally how a lot of this, all this stuff started was human growth hormone deficiency syndrome in children and, and extracting this from a, a human being, a cadaver. Mm. So tell, talk to us about these growth factors then that you guys are- so, yeah. So growth factors are really cool. And this is where the, you know, the science gets really fun. So I don't disagree before I get into all this type of stuff is I don't disagree with appropriate, proper medical application of specific pharmaceutical drugs like human growth hormone or testosterone or estrogen or progesterone or different hormones when they are medically applied the correct way in the right doses for the right issues. Um, a lot of your side effects and all these problems start when people make mistakes, they get too much, it's the wrong physician, et cetera. So we offer, we don't offer and we don't manufacture synthetic drugs. What we manufacture is the end result of that drug. That's where we come into play because we're offering individuals who don't want to, you know, inject an exogenous hormone into their bloodstream um, or want to mix at home or take a needle to begin with, or even take a pharmaceutical drug, but they want the same benefits that way they would get from that drug. That's where we come in. So to give a little kind of information to that, to understand, it's really important to understand how growth hormone actually works. So hormones in general are literally just chemical catalysts. Okay. They don't magically just go around and they, they make all these changes. They trigger the change to occur. So they're a chemical that's secreted human growth hormones secreted by the pituitary gland. It is secreted to create a chemical change. However, before growth hormone is ever used, it gets converted by the liver into what are called growth factors. So growth factors are the actual little cellular signals. They're called protein cytokines that get sent out into the blood to tell your cells, different ones, that all different kinds, there's different growth factors, to tell them to do something. It's not necessarily growth hormone itself. Growth hormone is the precursor to then these, these growth factors that are created. And they tell your body to you know, stimulate the um, cellular division or multiplication of collagen cells in your face, right? So if you don't have a cellular signal, a trigger to tell that cell to multiply, to differentiate, to spread, those cells don't do anything. So what we do is we just give your body the growth factors, the cellular signals, instead of ever introducing a synthetic drug or hormone into your body, which helps us to alleviate or, you know, not experience any side effects. 
And that also helps. I heard you in another podcast um, discussing execution. Your product helps with execution because we know what people are like. Sure. Yeah. Um, we have been working with physicians since 2009. That's our basically our entire business for the most part. And when developing new products, um, that's the first thing that we did was ask physicians, what is the biggest problem with our product or any products for that matter? Like if you could change one thing about medical products, drugs in general, what would that be? And it was never like the efficacy or how the product worked. The products always worked. That's great. That's why we did it. That's why we've been around for so long. The issue was patient compliance, meaning uh, getting people to take the product, to take a drug, whatever it is, to take it how it's supposed to be taken, like what the protocol is given by the physician. Our product is every single day, first thing in the morning, et cetera. So my job and what I do for a living is product development, product creation, um, making things usable for individuals. Okay. So what we did was, is we just took all of that difficulty of patient compliance out of the hands of the physician who are managing thousands of patients at a time. Well, larger doctors, thousands of patients at a time, hundreds of patients at a time, one person, we took all of that work off of them. And we automated and created an entire techno technology experience with the product itself, where users are literally reminded every single day at the right time of when to take their products, how to take it. They even, you know, they have their own personalized profiles to check off their doses, to keep track. So if they miss stuff, you know, it goes right to where that individual lives and that's on their phone. So everything is integrated to their smartphone. You get a text message when to take it. You get a text message when you forget. You get a, it lets you know when you're going to run out. So basically we just, we automated an entire patient compliance system into the palm of their hand on the place where, you know, most people spend most of their day, which is on their phone. So that's an app that you have. Yeah, it's, a, it's actually built right into the, into the website, but yeah, it's a, basically a web application that goes right through their text messaging. So you click right through and boom, you're in your patient profile. You can see everything that you've done. Um, it's totally private, totally secure, but you can just see what you're up to, where you're missing. So it's really good for physicians. It's more, it's way better for patients because you're creating and instilling good habits and not missing doses. Now I may look a little bit surprised because I didn't know that. I listened to a couple of your other interviews and I didn't know that you had this application. Yeah. And the reason I'm surprised is it's the age old tale. I say to my clients and followers all the time, you could have the best teacher in the world. You could have the best protocol in the world. But if you're not going to do it, it doesn't matter. It's not going 100%. to make a difference. Absolutely. And I actually did ask, ask on social media about two weeks ago, does anybody know of an app that will automatically send reminders to my clients? Because I don't have the time to keep texting everyone. But yep. it's like, that's why I'm surprised that there you is. You can build one. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, they, I guess they technically, they exist. We built, we just built one. We built one for exactly what it was. And um you know, nothing that it didn't need to be and nothing, nothing less, nothing more, just exactly what, what we wanted. So yeah, uh, yeah they do exist. That's what I, it's like, just a text, drink your water, go to bed, <laughs> take your supplement. Well, like, the key. Okay. So here's the key. And I'll, I'll, this is, I wasn't lying. This is literally what I do for a living. So here's the key about getting individuals to participate. So you have to, you have to tap into their actual inherent psycho psychology of their most basic fundamental survivalist um, techniques in their brain. Okay. So in order to get somebody to subscribe to a program or to, you know, follow a protocol, it has to do several different things. It has to, and it doesn't have to do all of them, but it has to inspire, has to, you know, part, they have to participate in a few. And some of those things, and I'll touch on some of them that we utilize, which when I start talking about this, you might notice, um, uh, what's the word that I'd like to use? You might notice not coincidences, but familiarities with other maybe applications or other programs or other things that people are doing. They're like, oh, wow, this makes total sense. So nobody has, nobody's different in that sense. Your, your brain is very 
at its very basic form in your psychology, you have basic survival techniques like hunting, like completion of tasks and social acceptance. So when you're building products or you're building programs for individuals to use, you have to tap into those things and you have to tap into them for a certain amount of time. You have to get a, you have to instill this behavior and you have to reward behavior. So the reason why I want to, I've never actually gotten into this on a podcast before. I'm giving away a lot of my secret sauce here. This is going to be a great show for somebody who's, you know, building a business, because if you can build your business like this, I promise you, or you build a product or a service, how I'm about to tell you, I'm going to save you years and tons of money on development. So you have to, number one, you have to always go where the individual lives. In today's day and age, they live on their phone. So your key is always to make it to their phone. Now, individuals have to be told to do something. They have to be, quote unquote, triggered. So you have internal triggers and you have external triggers. An external trigger is when I ding your phone. You hear a noise. You feel a vibration. Okay. That external trigger tells you to do something. Now, your phone has already programmed you to do something when you see that number. Okay. When you see num, we're going to get into the, so stop me at any point because this starts to go down a rabbit hole. Okay. So first an individual has to be triggered. So that's why we send them a text message. We're sending them a text message to trigger them. The next thing that will happen is you get into what's called the thrill of the hunt or into a survivalist technique in their brain. Meaning they want, they have, when an individual is provided a task, if it interests them, they have to complete that task. No matter how short, no matter how fast, no matter how long, they have to do it. Okay. They get a dopamine response when they complete that task, meaning they get a drug like release of a chemical in their brain if they were to do illicit drugs the same way as when they complete this task. So when they see a number on their phone as unanswered, they see unanswered emails, that number, that little notification, that gets them to click through. They want to clear that number. Okay. And when they do that and they see that, that gives them that dopamine response. It gives them that, that I completed this task. Now, what we do is we build those types of triggers into our products. We build them into usage, into completion of those tasks, because every time an individual, I mean, you have clients, you're giving them protocols, you're giving them things to do when people complete those tasks, no matter what that task is, they feel really good about themselves. Those incremental um, accomplishments are going to lead to bigger accomplishments to achieve their goals. If you can't get an individual to achieve very small incremental accomplishments, they will never reach their overall goal. Plus they'll never even be in, like interested in, in, in participating further because they, they don't get that risk. They don't get that reward. You can look at the same thing of rice or excuse me, rice of mice or rats in scientific study. They're always rewarded for their task. So now you've tapped into an absolute external trigger. And now by doing this over time, so then you would build it into time. We build ours into 28 day cycles because an individual, once you complete the first 28 days of any type of cycle, you've instilled some sort of a good habit. Meaning if they break from that habit, they're going to get a different type of response, which is a negative response. They're going to feel like they are missing something, which is called an internal trigger. So if in order for certain things to work, you must hit people with external triggers, the ding on your phone, and you must be able to build something, whether it's a product or service into an internal trigger, meaning you, in, you can create or instill a feeling positive or negative into your product or service, whether it's done or not done. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're saying something as small, because I do have this in regards to routines. My mm -hmm. clients and they're simple routines, but even just a, a post in our forum or our group, are you doing this? You can see the sense of satisfaction. Yes, I did it. But you're saying something as small as sending a text on a basic level, say, do this, take the whatever it is, the supplement. Mm -hmm. And as simple as that gives them the dopamine reward because as soon as they click it. through. As soon as they click through. So it does two things. One. Once they, once they feel that external trigger, okay, they're going to want to clear that and complete the task from their plate. If they see a one on their text message, if they see a 10, they're going to want to clear through all 10. That's why people don't, they don't like seeing unread text messages on their phone, even if they don't read them or they respond, they still want them cleared out. Same with emails. 
So once they get that external trigger, then their body goes into the next response, which is they want to complete the task at hand, which is clearing that text message or taking that dose, whatever that is. And then if you can tie in some sort of um, reward for that response, uh, then you're going to continue to, to drill that into them and create what would be considered an internal trigger, meaning um, it's something that now can instill and create a feeling within them, whether they do or do not do that. Now there's, we could continue to go down the line of other things that you just talked about posting it on social media or some sort of tag or whatever it is. Now you're talking about social acceptance, which is acceptance of the tribe, which is in a whole nother type of um, um, psychological piece that you need to include. Uh, which really, if you can figure out how to include the acceptance of the tribe um, part of that psychology, then you're really going to win. That's, that's, that's the hardest one to do because you have to make it, you have to make whatever you're doing accepted by the tribe first. Then you have newcomers that want to be accepted. So you have to create the tribe and create the, the community first and foremost. Then you can get a social acceptance um, to that, unless you use something that's already socially accepted, you know, health, wellness, fitness, then individuals will, you know, get that same type of response by sharing it, et cetera, because they intrinsically know that by sharing this, they will gain some sort of social acceptance. And that would be the, I mean, that's a basic survival technique is, is acceptance by the tribe. When 10,000 years ago, or chimpanzees or different types of, you know, we can use primates. I'm, I'm a big fan of certain chimpanzee bonobos type um, scientific studies. But um, if you're a chimp and you're outside the tribe, you die. So um, that is, that's ingrained in our physiology. Uh, well, I think from what I've been doing for years, uh, my business has been running for quite a while now, the social acceptance aspect, I've had a lot of experience with that. And even like I mentioned, for something as simple to post in our forum, see who's doing say their evening routine, and then you start to see everyone comment. And sometimes it's as simple as I, I would perceive it as knowing that Mandy and Anne and Tanya, they're all doing it too. I'm part of that group that elicits enough of a response to be rewarding in itself. But then also, if someone else does comment on your comment, oh, look, I'm having, for example, Tulsi tea. I'm a big fan of Tulsi tea in the evenings. And let's say Mandy comments on Anne's post. Oh, I'm doing it too. That high five alone. You're not getting a physical reward. You're getting the acknowledgement. And like you said, you're part of something. That in itself is enough to elicit that dopamine response that will 100%. contribute to consistency. 100%. Absolutely. So what you're doing is, is with all these little different things, you're creating that consistency of use. So um, we like to use our powers for good, not of evil. So we are instilling good habits for a product and in, in products that instill good behavior, but also actually, you know, give individuals the benefits that they're looking for. So it's a win-win for them. So let's, we kind of digressed a little bit there. No, but it's it was, fine. It I love talking very... about it. That's my, that's my life. I mean, yeah. I've spent years studying how to do this. So it's fun to be able to share it with somebody. Well, it's interesting because as health professionals, we can make the products, we can make the protocols, but we can't get people to do it if there's not some sort of plan of action on our part to help them. So back to your product, which I found really interesting. I know the answer, but can you tell the audience how is your product derived and made? We pull the growth factors, stem cell proteins and platelets out of elk antler. Okay. The next question is obviously, how is this done? But also everyone's going to want to know because of the whole moral situation nowadays. Sure. Are any elks hurt in the process of this? So a hundred percent, totally understand. Great question. And it's totally valid because um, if we were going through slaughtering animals, it would be a business that I wouldn't really be interested in participating in. So um, first, it's important to know that the animal actually lives four to seven years longer on the farm than they would in the wild, number one. Number two, you have to understand how these products are derived, or how these products are, are made, and more importantly, the entire process the animal goes through, whether we're involved or not. So I know I said elk antler, but a lot of people are like, okay, I have no idea what that means or what's going on. So it's really important to understand that there is only one appendage in the entire mammalian animal kingdom, meaning all mammals that fully regenerates every single year. And that's an antler. 
that is cervidae and species antlers, meaning deer, moose, elk, right? The males grow. I'm going to use this term. It's not what they're called, but people will relate to it, but they they grow horns in their skull out of their head, right? You see the racks, you see, um, you can Google anything. I mean, it's going to show you these antlers that are growing. Those antlers grow in and out every single year, meaning they grow in, they grow in what's called a velvet state, meaning they're an organ encapsulated in velvet. They grow about one to two inches a day. So faster than grass grows that we use the American elk and that, that antler grows up to about 600 pounds. I mean, it is a huge deal. It's this massive living organ. Now, before the animal goes into season, let's say, or mating season, those antlers calcify, meaning they harden. Okay. So all of that living porous breathing material, that's full of these stem cells and growth factors to grow these incredible, you know, organs, they calcify and they harden. And then after mating season, they literally fall out on their own. They're like bone, they're like fingernail clippings, leave it like that. Okay. And they use these antlers during, during the mating season to literally fight other males to the death or for mating rights. Okay. So before these antlers calcify, you can humanely remove them and you can extract the living material that is currently within them before it ever hardens, calcifies, or falls out of that velvet state. So that's what we do. It's, it's, it's easier to think about it like a PRP process. If anybody is familiar in the medical space or whatever, um, you know, PRP is extracting the blood from an individual. You basically spin it in a centrifuge and you separate good material from bad. And then you reintroduce the good material into the body to accelerate healing, blood flow, whatever. That's exactly the same way you should think about this product. We're extracting all of these incredible growth factors, which are the end result of human growth hormone. They're literally designed to grow this incredible mammalian organ, like crazy fast speeds, this massive huge, I mean, it's 600 pounds. It's not, you know, six pounds. I mean, this is a huge organ and you're able to ingest it as a, these end result, these growth factors as a human, because they are literally molecularly identical to what your body produces. So we're able to give you the exact same response is if you were going to take a synthetic drug or human or growth hormone creates, but we never have to actually introduce a synthetic drug into your system. We never have to inject anything into you and you don't have to go through any of the potential side effects that could, that could come with synthetic drug application, right? Anytime you introduce an exogenous hormone synthetic um, or synthetic drug, you run the risk of side effects. I'm not saying you will experience them, but like any other drug, Tylenol, anything, I shouldn't use the actual name, but any type of any type of drug, pain med, whatever it is, you run the risk of side effects. Some are not so bad. Some are life-threatening. So that's the purpose and what we're doing is to give people the benefits, but without, you know, potentially putting their life on the line. So you said it's structurally or molecularly similar. So are molecularly we thinking, identical. So we're thinking more along the lines of bioidentical hormones in that aspect. Sure. Um, bioidentical hormones are still, um, you know, there, there's a synthesis that takes part in the lab, depending upon where you're deriving them from. Bioidentical hormones are really awesome for a lot of people. Some people, they don't respond at all. So, um, but you're still introducing a hormone. You're, you're still introducing a chemical which is creating the catalyst that you're looking for. Instead, we skip that process. We give you the end result, which triggers the cell. There's a reason why we do that. And that is because anytime, whether, whether anytime you're introducing an exogenous hormone, whether they're bioidentical or not, you are going to create what's called a negative feedback loop. Meaning when you introduce that hormone, your body shuts off natural production of that hormone because you're telling your body you already have it. So with men, when you introduce testosterone, synthetic, whatever, your body stops making testosterone. Now I understand if you're at a super low level, who cares? Because you're not making it anyway. So it's, it's a win. I understand that. Well, however, that's not actually typically the case for most men. They're trying to offset what they're not making as much of anymore. However, by doing that, you're introducing a synthetic hormone, which is going to stop natural production of the hormone you already have. In men, it causes all kinds of weird stuff. It causes gynecomastia, which is growing of breast tissue. It causes shrinking of the testes. Literally, your testicles shrink and start to um, ascend, not descend, but ascend back into your body. You, um, your body has a natural response to 
increase its natural estrogen production to offset the increasing in testosterone, which causes all kinds of weird emotional problems for, and I know I'm talking about men, but I'm being really specific with just one instead of jumping all over the place, but that's a whole lot of issues. That's crazy stuff. So, um, it's just not what we do. We're, that's not our business. We're trying to give individuals an alternative to that. It's definitely a consideration uh, when we sit down regulation of production of our own hormonal pathways no. and systems. That's even a consideration I have around prescribing melatonin. I'm always apprehensive. Well, yeah. Listen, a melatonin, you're getting me started on a whole nother thing, but melatonin is the problem. So if you are taking, you know, and this is a lot, but if you're, t- it's, it's a lot in this country. It's not, it, excuse me. It's not a lot in this country. It's a lot in other countries. If you're taking five milligrams of melatonin a day, you got to understand that's still a hormone and melatonin is a huge deal. I don't care if it's over the counter or not. If you're overtaking melatonin, you will create that same negative feedback loop. And then people like start on this melatonin trail. And then before you know it, they're just, they're personally increasing their dosing over time because it's not regul. It's not really regulated. It's not a prescription drug, right? So you're just buying this at whatever corner store exists. Not only that, but you have no idea really where this raw material is coming from. But then you're just upping and upping and upping. Nobody even knows you're at 20 plus milligrams a day. And then you wonder why you can't sleep. It's literally because your body now stops producing natural melatonin and you are completely out of luck. I've seen it, um, the clinical applications of higher doses of melatonin in regards to treatment of cancer and other issues like that, which I perfectly um, agree with and it's acceptable, but people don't, because melatonin is over the counter in the States and Canada, it's not actually over the counter in Ireland and a lot of European countries, you cannot buy melatonin. I've had people ask me to send them melatonin, which I have not done, but you can't just buy it over the counter. Yeah, don't say that on the right. Like, honestly, I've, I have many, many clients and I don't recall recommending melatonin to any of them. I would rather optimize their own melatonin production through other um, protocols and pathways than supplement with something that I know is going to cause bigger problems down the line. Like it is, it's just a mask. It's a cloak that's going to cover up a bigger problem. If you don't fix the bigger problem. Most, most people aren't creating the melatonin that they're, they should be creating naturally because they don't get outside. So sunlight, direct sunlight exposure to your eyes, meaning being outside when it's sunlight out is actually the start of where melatonin is created naturally. So if you're not out in the morning, you're not out getting sunlight. Uh, I'm not talking five minutes. Like you need to go outside, no sunglasses. Don't wear your sunglasses. It's okay to get sunlight into your eyes. It's been like that for millennia. Um, <laughs> you, uh, that's where melatonin's process actually starts is literally just getting sunlight into your face without sunglasses. I will, this is going to be probably humorous to you and my clients and followers that are listening. Uh, The city that I'm in is quite small right now. We're outside Calgary and I'll drive past the clients. I'm I'm blessed. I have a lot of clients, but I'll drive past the clients and they'll be wearing their sunglasses at 9 a.m. And I'll send them a text. I just saw you wearing your sunglasses and they'll come up with an excuse but as they know, I'll call them out. I, I specifically say, please don't wear your sunglasses before noon or 1 p.m. Like, that's it. Unless, obviously, there's a glare or it's snowing and there's extreme light. Like, use your common sense. But really, people don't get the importance of getting that sunlight into your eyes. And then, of course, we have the electronics, the blue light exposure. I mean, I do it too. We're only human. Sometimes I will watch a movie before bed. But the majority of the time I won't because I don't want to compromise any of these hormonal circadian and diurnal rhythms from happening. Like I don't want to mess stuff up. But you look at society now, everyone's playing Fortnite. They're playing Pokemon Go on their phone. They're watching God knows what on Netflix. Like this is why we have all these imbalances and we're trying to fix them by taking something instead that's going to cause bigger problems. I mean, I agree with you. I have nothing to add to that other than basically, you know, 
think about in today's world, everything is almost set to go against you. Um, all of our creature comforts and all of these fun little toys that we have are great. And they, you know, I would be nowhere without access on my phone 24 seven. I have phones, you know, <laughs> I, I, Australia is basically one of our biggest markets. Okay. And Australia is literally the other side of the other side of the time, other side of the clock at all times. So without a phone at all hours of the night, I have no contact with Australia. So I understand I'm the number one guy to say I'm, you know, I am attached to my phone for a lot of different reasons, but to not take the steps outside to offset some of this stuff, you're not going to get away from a lot of it, but you can do things to help yourself out. For instance, you know, I work out in the morning. I make sure I stand outside. I'm very lucky. I have my own gym. So like I can walk right outside, but you know, I stand outside and I take my early morning calls in my driveway because I can just get sunlight and it feels great. And it's in my face and it's awesome. And there's little things you can do here and there to, um, offset a lot of these problems. For instance, one of the things that we do is, you know, we're big, we, you know, we have these like candlelight things all over our room, my, my wife and I, and, and around the house. So instead of just having blaring, like fluorescent lights all the time, it's actually really cool. I mean, like you can just put candles out and of course in a safe space or whatever, but that makes a huge difference though, too. And honestly, it adds a great ambiance and de decoration to your house. So, <laughs> I mean, it's a win-win, but, yeah. um, I mean, those little things like that, I think people really, and I was one of them for a very long time. People really underestimate the value of making very small incremental changes to their day instead of jumping up and just going right for the coffee. Why don't you slam some water first? Like it's like so easy to do very simple things instead of reaching for a beverage that I drink every single morning. I love coffee. I think it's great, but you're literally, you know, do you reach for the diuretic, which is a coffee, which is going to dehydrate you first, or do you reach for your water first and make sure that's step one. So it's, it's all these little incremental changes. No one's asking you to wear, you know, go bare feet and run through the, you know, three feet of snow and live in the mountains. That'd probably be really good for some people, but no one's asking you to do that, but it's these little incremental shifts that you can add and they add up, um, they're compounding interest. They add up massively over time. Mm, it's, 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 uh, we're going to move on, but this comes back to the compliance and execution. People have this mm -hmm. fear around getting uncomfortable, but some of this stuff is so simple. Like I did, I switched out all my lights to incandescent. I have these little plugins that, um, I have issues around Alice in Wonderland. That's my calling card. People know I love Alice in Wonderland. So I have little teapots that plug in mm -hmm. and inside the teapots, they're incandescent. So in the darker months, I turn them on. And it's comforting. It's warming. It, it, the, like you said, it, the sure. ambiance is more um, cozy, shall we mm -hmm. say. But You'll like your home better. I promise you. It's really cool yeah. when you flip over but the switch easy. like that. Yeah, yeah it's 100%. Easy. If people have a fear. There, there's fear around compliance and execution of becoming uncomfortable. Is something too hard? Like you mentioned, we're trying to make things easier for people so mm -hmm. that they will do it. So... Uh, this is kind of going to be a bigger loaded question now while we start to wrap up, but I just want to drive home um, or have you maybe talk to the audience about what you've came across in your research, but also your interactions with clients and um, I'll say customers, the benefits that you've seen around using growth factor and optimizing the end product of human growth sure. hormone. So I'm so excited that you, that this is today because I got a message, um, what was last night or the day before about like some really impactful stuff, but anytime, look at, you can Google growth factor science. I mean, the NIH, every major scientific research faci like facility and, and, and organization, organi organizing body, there is more science behind growth factor use than you can ever read 24 hours a day, twice on Sundays. It's, it's usage because there's, there's multiple different types of growth factors, right? It's usage across uh, metabolism, immune function, muscle regeneration, tissue healing, wound healing, um, you know, rehabilitation after surgeries or traumatic accidents to everything from nerve regeneration and neurological issues like Parkinson's, ALS, diabetes, all this cool stuff, tons of science behind all of them. And most of them can all be related back to low serum or blood, you know, blood levels of growth factor. That stuff is great. And, and you can read about it all day. And it's, there's plenty of science behind it. There's more than you'll ever, we'll ever even be able to read. 
it's it's just a tried and true fact. I mean, you there's no way refuting it. It's, it's a factual information. The really cool benefits outside of the physiological changes that you can benefit from, or you know, lack of disease that you might be walking into, is the cognitive and emotional effects of individuals that they experience when they are so used to living a life of low energy, no motivation, no drive. Like those are physiological responses. They're not just psychological. They're, 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 they're psychological because you probably are lacking in a phys you're a, you have a physiological deficiency. You have a hormone deficiency that is happening over time and at different rates for different people. And when those hormone deficiencies happen, they are directly related to things like depression, anxiety, all of these, you know, low energy, low libido, all of these things. Well, depression, anxiety, low libido, low energy directly affect our personal relationships with our friends and our family. So the other day I was, you know, we work with, we're huge in combat sports. Okay. So MMA, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, all that stuff, massive in combat sports. Why wouldn't we be? So, but I was talking with an athlete who's a, a national, he's a national champion in America and he's a national champion in Brazil. I mean, this guy is the real deal. And we can talk about performance athletics all we want all day long, twice on Sundays. And it's great. But he goes, you know what, Dustin? And this is in his, you know, broken English and Portuguese, but his, he's like, you know what, Dustin? He's like, people never talk about this stuff. But the thing that I've realized the most and the benefit that I've gotten is what my wife told me. She, he said, since, you know, you've been using our product and I'm, I, yeah, it was our product, but I'm saying if you just fill in a lot of these gaps from hormone issues, whether it's our product or something else, she, his wife was like, you're just a better father because you're just more present. You're pleasant to be around. You have higher energy. There's no, you know, midday naps. Like you spend more time with the kids and not that he was a bad father at all. It's not what I'm saying. This man is a phenomenal father, but he's a business owner. He's a professional athlete. He literally travels, you know, all over, all over the place to go fight human beings. Like he doesn't live an easy life. And so for able for him as a small business owner, an athlete, just a dad, you know, that has, uh, everybody has their own issues at work and at home or whatever, but to be able to change that aspect for somebody or for him to be able to change that about his life of having better energy, being happier, be having a better, you know, not having depression, anxiety, those things, that is like a huge benefit. Right. And, and that is a big deal. And he's not the only one to say things like this to us. And it's, I think that is the, probably the biggest impact that we can have aside from physiologically aiding or helping people, you know, look younger, looking younger is great. But if you're a horrible human being to be around, I mean, that's a whole nother story in and of itself. But the fact that changing a lot of these things are able to help dads be better dads. I mean, that's like a, that's a huge deal. Or even better husbands, dare I 100%. say. 100%. Yeah. It, well, I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, I'm saying it's all the same. Better husbands, yeah, better fathers, yeah. better brothers, better coaches. Um, I didn't mean to, you know, specifically get into the dad thing, but 100%. No, no, I mean, he's a, he's okay. a, he'll tell you straight out of his mouth. He's a better husband. He's a better man for doing what he does. Yeah, well, well it, it rings home to when I think about my clients, back to what I said about this being maybe the base of all hormones is that mm -hmm. a lot of the times people will want to get hormones tested or check for deficiencies. They're irritable with their kids. Their marriage is failing because yeah. when you're frustrated and overwhelmed, you can forget about communication. That's gone. Uh, but they, apart from the physical appearance that you mentioned, they don't feel good in themselves. Cause you'll hear people say, I just don't feel like myself. I feel something's wrong. Very normal, very so normal thing. Yeah, they look in the mirror, they don't see themselves anymore. And it's yeah, not even exactly. a physiological issue. It's the, how yeah. they feel inside. Who yeah, am I? Deal. And when did this happen? Kind of thing. Yep. But then you look at society and the way we live and correct me if I'm wrong, but stress and cortisol is going to downregulate your own production of these hormones. Once, once cortisol is spiked in the body, the body only notices that hormone. It is a fight or flight hormone, meaning that hormone is spurred. It's creates put into the blood, just like adrenaline. Once that happens, that's the only thing the body worries about. So a lot of other physiological functions go to the wayside, especially so, metabolic function. Yeah. So, 
I mean, who isn't affected by stress nowadays? So Nobody. maybe maybe you don't need your hormones tested. Maybe you don't need to be clutching at straws. Maybe you need to try this as an aid instead to just help your baseline be stronger for whatever the world throws at you. Just the way I'm thinking when I consider my clients and the people I speak to, maybe this product or anyone's product, not just yours, will be helpful, more helpful than clutching at straws and wanting to get your hormones tested because you're not feeling like yourself, but it's just because of the catabolism that's happening because of the stress we all perceive and experience sure. nowadays. Yeah, 100%. Right. I would agree. So, yeah. So while we start to wrap up, when someone does take a product like yours, how fast can they expect to start feeling good or seeing results? I, and I do understand everyone's individual and we catabolize hormones mm -hmm. differently. And, but on average, how, how fast? Will I wouldn't even say on average, I would say massively overwhelming response is 12 to 14 days. They start to feel that's like the Eureka moment of energy, um, kind of a euphoric type feel. They start to feel like themselves again, 12 to 14 days, hands down. Some guys are sooner. Yeah. Um, and then you start to see physiological changes in a, and benefits about four to six weeks in, and then blood panels will show overwhelming differences, 30 to 90 days. So it's, 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 it's not really an assumption at all. I mean, this is that we get this data every single day. It's very specific. So who is this for? Who's it not for? I mean, we're not prescribing anybody under like the it. age of 35. I mean, it's not an inexpensive thing to do, right? Like yeah. anytime you get into synthetic hormone treatments, you're talking about, we'll talk about synthetics first, but anytime you get into synthetic hormone treatments, you're talking about 380 bucks, 280 bucks for just blood work. Then you're talking about the actual products themselves, which I know this is a huge range, but it's real depending upon what state you're in or what country or what the regulations are, if they are even available, you're anywhere from, you know, a couple hundred bucks to thousands of dollars a month. Right. So it's, it's an investment. We come in at like a, a literally not like we literally come in at a fraction of that type of price, but it's still an investment. Anybody who's under the age of like 35, under the age of 30, you don't necessarily need what we're offering. Will it help you? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it absolutely will. If you're over the age of 30, over the age of 35, it's a game changer, 100%. Um, so anybody under the age of 30, teenagers, early 20s, there's literally no use for it. There's minimal use for it. It's not a good spend of your money. That time would be better spent um, investing in solid lifestyle choices, health, fitness, nutrition, sleep that are going to help you to not ever experience what most majority of individuals are experiencing after 35, 40 years old. So you don't really need to spend your cash yet. Um, you know, set up a really good lifestyle plan and maybe you never need our product, which would be the best, right? I hate to even say that we sell stuff for a living, but at the end of the day, you know, you don't really need it. Um, the perfect individual for us is 35 plus years old. You are at a massive decline in specific hormones. As soon, as soon as you finish puberty, your hormones start to decrease. We see that, you know, you hit that wall around 40. So 35 is the perfect time to get started. So you don't ever actually have to hit that, you know, proverbial wall or ever have to get to the point where you look in the mirror and you're like, man, I feel terrible. This isn't me. We like to hit people before, you know, you have to go through that. You shouldn't have to have that type of, you know morning, really. That's a horrible way to start the day. So anybody, um, men, women over the age of 35, we love individuals who are either just starting their fitness journey, just starting their health and wellness journey, because it's part of a program. This isn't going to work as well as you want it to work. If you're on a pizza and donut diet, I mean, you got other things to worry about than spending money on our products. If you eat pizza and donuts every day, that's not yeah. for anybody. It doesn't matter how good and fit you are. So we like individuals to implement this into an existing program and regimen where they're going to see the best fastest results. Um, and they're going to get the best bang for their buck. I feel like the, the type of person that would be interested in something like this already takes their health pretty seriously in any way. Um, and I also find when you look at the financial aspect of things that when people feel so bad, price doesn't come into it. They'll give yeah, you I their know, house just to feel better. And I've I hear you. So you get someone that's serious, but they feel awful. The financial aspect doesn't even come into it from what I see. And anyway, people just want to feel yeah. better, especially when they start to realize that time is catching up on them. They're 100%. 40, they're 50, and they're like, uh-oh, 
like now I'm not feeling so good, but time is moving very well. Fast. You know what they say? If you don't invest in your health up front, you're going to invest in it twofold later. I think it's probably tenfold later, but I'm being, you know, conservative at twofold later. But um, you're investing, whether it's time, money, or effort, into your health at some point in life. If you didn't do it before, well, you're going to have to double down now. And it's just the, you know, the facts of life. I know. And it, dare I say, it's harder the older you get as well. So, yeah, I, I would say it might be harder phys- physically. Um, it doesn't have to be, but I mean, I would say harder physically, but psychologically, um, you're kind of getting pushed to that, you know, the point of like, Hey man, I got it. It's, you know, put up or shut up. So hopefully, you know, that psychological response kind of kicks in and says, you know, now is the time let's rock and roll. It's there's no turning back. I think it could go either way. If I'm honest, because you also see sure. the older people get wear and tear on their minds. They just don't have the fight in them anymore. So I do, I get what you're saying. Some people at that age will take it seriously, but other people are like, I'm too old now. I've been worn down but, and they accept it. Yeah. So we have to, of course, mention safety and any interactions that might come from using a product like this. Yeah. So we're fully FDA compliant, fully FDA registered. We have to report any type of this weird stuff. If any, it does come down. Um, and since 2009, um, I think we've had, I haven't, I haven't personally had to report anything to the FDA. Um, we don't have any really known side effects or long-term issues, et cetera. There's no, um, we always challenge physicians to send us studies of, you know, to natural growth factor use dependent upon, you know, certain ailments that really concern individuals, et cetera, later on life. And no one's been able to send us a study once. So there's tons of studies out there for synthetic drug use, synthetic growth factors, synthetic, just make sure you're reading the right stuff. Um, but yeah, we in in since 2009, we haven't had to report anything. Awesome. That's great. Not many companies can say that, unfortunately. So this last thing, I swear this is the last thing because um, there's a big interest around hormones with my clients. So sure. taking growth factor in this form, how is it going to benefit someone in... I don't want to say upregulating their own production of testosterone, which is equally important for men and women, mm-hmm. but um, help maybe optimize these sex hormones and balance them out back to where we said helping people feel good, helping with confidence, helping with just being more calm, being a better father and so on. Sure. So I'm not sure um, specifically because we kind of touched on a little bit there about, um, you know, optimizing or balancing hormones. Um, I I would use the term optimizing hormones. So remember, this is not stimulating or manipulating your natural production in any way. So if you're a woman, it doesn't increase not naturally. It does not increase, you know, testosterone where you're going to grow, you know, a mandible jaw and your shoulders are going to get three inches wider. That it's not physiologically possible. That's not what these products do. They're not synthetic drugs. They do not put you outside of an abnormal scenario. They cannot do that. They lack the ability to it by design. So um, what they will help you do is to optimize and to fully benefit from the hormones that do exist inside of your body. So you can utilize them the way that they were designed naturally by God to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm glad I asked that because that's important for people to understand. Yeah. And there's a big interest. And this actually has been really interesting, as you can probably tell, because I've totally digressed from my notes several times. It always interests me to have a real conversation with sure. stuff that interests me along with someone else. So thank you for your time. I know I kept you a little bit longer, but can you tell people where they can find out more about what you guys are sure. offering, what you do, any sort of um, research along with all of that? Yeah, you can go right on our website. It's bioproteintech.com, B-I-O-P-R-O-T-E-I-N-T-E-C-H.com. You can check it out. You can see exactly what we're talking about. You can read all about it. Um, where we're really active and where our brand like really lives is Instagram. Why not? That's where our community really gets together. And what's really cool about it is it's really taken on a life of its own. That's where our users they, I mean, they're so active. Everything we share is user generated. Nobody's paid to generate anything. Um, people ask questions and other, like other bio pro plus users will jump in and and answer the questions for them about their own experiences. I mean, it's wild. It's really cool. So if you want to, you know, get a kind of a taste and a feel for the brand and what's going on, 
highly recommend Instagram, which is bioprotein tech. It's the same thing. It's at B I O P R O T E I N T E C H. And, uh, you know, if you need more information, you want to do it, just throw us a DM. There's always someone pretty much answering that stuff. And frankly, um, we're here to like help. So if it's something you need help with, or you need questions, if it is something that we cannot answer legally, or we do not have the answer, we'll just point you in the right direction with a trusted professional that can, right? We've been doing this for well over a decade with physicians all over the place at this point. So there's probably somebody in your area we can help you with. Yeah. I mean, and that's it. We care. We want to make a difference. We're not trying to steal anything from anyone else. We just want to make a difference. Yeah. So thank you very much. That was a pleasure. So thank you for your time and answering the spontaneous questions that I had that maybe you haven't been asked on other podcasts before. No, I love it. I love the open book type thing. We're an open book company. We're hundred percent authentic and uh, you know, we're here to serve first and foremost. So if you have any other questions, we're here to answer them. Great. Thank you so much.